Hey everyone, it's Alexander the Real Mr. Robinson. Welcome to the channel. This is my review for The Sword and the Stone, which came out in 1963 and is the seventh film in Disney's Silver Age. The movie begins with a backstory of how the King of England passed away, uh, but he left no heir to the throne. So a sword pops up in a giant stone uh, and it's basically presenting itself for whoever would be the future king of England. Uh, many people try to lift it, but none succeed. So England is pretty much in the Dark Ages. The movie officially begins when a wizard named Merlin uh, seeks out a young 12-year-old boy named Arthur, who is an orphan, uh, and tries to teach him all the rights from wrongs uh, because he foresees Arthur as the future king of England. King Arthur, pretty much. So this is one of those Disney movies that I don't think I ever saw from beginning to end. Uh, I remember seeing one of the song segments when Merlin and Arthur are fish in one of those old Disney sing-along VHS tapes. And I know James Rolfe of Cinemassacre has listed this movie as his favorite Disney animated movie. Uh, so I figured to myself, okay, this has got to be a good movie. And again, I remember seeing bits of it and remember liking those bits. So... I'm excited to give this one a shot. And then I finally watched the movie for the first time from beginning to end, and man, I don't like this movie. I won't say I hate it. There's nothing about this movie that you can straight up hate, but it's not good. I didn't connect with it emotionally, and it's just a very uninteresting movie. It's uninteresting to look at. The characters are uninteresting. Well, most of them. It's just so boring. And that's the biggest problem with the movie is that nothing actually happens. That whole backstory of the king dying and the sword and the stone being placed, that never comes into play until the very end of the movie. And I'll tell you what happens at the very end later on. But the majority of the movie is just Merlin teaching Arthur all these life lessons and how to learn right from wrong, which in a sense, I guess is good for kids because some little rugrats out there need to know what's right from wrong, but it's just not that interesting to watch. And it usually involves Merlin and Arthur doing these magical things that kids won't have access to. Not to mention the movie is completely random. Scenes just happen out of nowhere with no setup, no context whatsoever and then they just go away like nothing happened. There's a scene where Arthur and Merlin turn into squirrels, and the whole sequence is Arthur trying to escape this female squirrel who has the hots for him. It goes on for too long, and then once it's done, it, we never come back to that aspect. Uh, Madame Mim is the film's villain, and I use the term villain loosely because she's never established beforehand. Arthur turns into a bird and is getting a flight lesson from Archimedes, but something happens to where Arthur loses control and falls right into her house, and I'm just like, hello? Who are you? Where did this character just magically pop up? And she claims that she's an old rival of Merlin's, and again, we were never told that. This is near the end of the movie and this character just came out of nowhere. She apparated into this movie uh, with no heads up. And then when we get to the actual end of the movie, that's where it's probably at its most random. Like I said, the sword in the stone is set up in the opening of the film, and it never comes back until the very end. And what happens at the very end is Arthur's stepbrother, uh, has lost his sword, Arthur tries desperately to try to find a new one, and he sees, oh, there's this sword in a stone, that, that'll do it, grab it, yoink, okay, time to take this to my brother, uh, and the stepfather and everyone else is like, wait, where did you get that sword? You pulled it out of the stone? Give me that. I'm gonna put it back in the stone, and I'm gonna see if anyone else can try to pull it out, because you clearly didn't do that. And then Arthur gets another chance to pull it out again, and he becomes King Arthur, and then the movie just ends. Like, wow, that, 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 if this is considered an Arthurian legend type movie, it barely has anything to do with it. I mean, it has the characters of Arthur and Merlin, but uh, it's, it pretty much feels like a prequel to another movie that they wanted to make that never actually happened. Funny, going back to what I said about Sleeping Beauty, about how they never actually made any direct-to-video sequels, you'd think that they'd make more direct-to-video sequels to this, but I guess since Sword of the Stone is not one of the most popular Disney movies, they just didn't do it. Now let's talk about the characters for a second. Arthur is just kind of your generic good kid, 
And I feel like he might be the prototype for all those dweeby, nerdy underdogs in other animated movies, like Hiccup from How to Train Your Dragon. But Arthur is probably the least interesting of those archetypes in animated films. Uh, there's nothing about Arthur that really interests me. I mean, I guess he is a nice kid, but that's all his character is defined by. And the weirdest aspect is that his voice keeps changing throughout the movie. You'll notice that the main voice actor hit puberty, so there are points where his voice is low pitched, and then there are parts where his voice is high pitched. Like imagine if during Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, or even the Chamber of Secrets, Daniel Radcliffe and Rupert Grin's voices started changing throughout the movie. It's like, Ooh, how do you explain that? So the movie was directed by Wolfgang Reitherman, who is known for animating some of Disney's most epic sequences. And at this point, he is now the sole director of some of these movies. And because the main actor who played Arthur went through puberty, Reitherman actually had to hire his two sons to try to fill in that role. But honestly, I can't tell if they did an effective job or not, because Arthur's voice is still inconsistent in between scenes. Merlin is a fun character. I feel like he's probably the prototype for what the genie from Aladdin would end up being, in the sense that there are a lot of pop culture references. Merlin is foreseeing a lot of the stuff that wouldn't happen until far in the future. And uh, I think it's done more effectively in Aladdin. Because the difference is that this movie tries to be more set in Arthurian legend, whereas Aladdin is just kind of its own thing. You kind of accept the fact that there's this genie that makes all these pop culture references. In this movie, Merlin being able to see far into the future, travels forward in time and then comes back with Hawaiian vacation clothes, almost like he's trying to do a Master Roshi cosplay from Dragon Ball Z. But Merlin is definitely more interesting than King Arthur. He has a lot of personality, he's a lot of fun, and the dynamic he has with Archimedes is pretty funny as well. For as boring as this movie got, and let me tell you, halfway through this under two hour movie, I fell asleep. The banter between Merlin and Archimedes is very fun and probably the most entertaining aspect about the movie. And the wizard's duel between Merlin and Madame Mim, while that character just pops up out of nowhere, the wizard's duel itself is a lot of fun. Seeing these two wizards just transform into all these animals and try to outdo each other, it's creative. I like how it ends with Madame Mim turning into a giant dragon, and the way Merlin has to defeat her is pretty much turn into a virus and getting her sick. That's funny and very, very harsh. But outside of that, this movie really is not worth mentioning in the conversation. There's an aspect of the movie that I didn't mention, an important aspect in Disney's history, and that's that this is the first movie where the Sherman Brothers wrote the songs. And the reason I didn't mention that beforehand is that while the Sherman Brothers have wrote some of the most iconic songs in Disney's catalog, like the songs from Mary Poppins, the songs from The Jungle Book, and several others, the songs in this movie are not in the very least memorable. I can't hum an entire song in this movie like I can with some of the others, especially with the next movie I'm going to be reviewing, The Jungle Book. So it's a shame that one of the most iconic songwriting duos in Disney's history started out with one of the most mediocre movies. I, I just say watch at your own risk. It's not a bad movie, and admittedly there are some things to like, as I mentioned beforehand, but the movie is mostly a bore and nothing really happens that can be considered exciting. And the animation doesn't do anything that makes me go, wow, that was impressive, or hey, this fits within the style of the movie, like with 101 Dalmatians. At the end of the day, it's just a very forgettable movie. It is harmless, but forgettable nonetheless. And there you go, that's my review for The Sword in the Stone, which was also the last movie released while Walt Disney was alive. Next time we're gonna wrap up the Silver Age of Disney animation and talk about the last movie that Walt Disney had any involvement with, The Jungle Book. And I'm gonna try to get this review up earlier than next Wednesday, because last week I had some real problems within my personal life to where I just couldn't make any videos. But I wanna try to catch up, so hopefully soon you will see my review for The Jungle Book. But now I wanna know what you guys think about The Sword and the Stone. If you've seen it, what did you think? Whatever the case may be, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is The Real Mr. Robinson telling you there is only one. Hello everyone, I just wanted to say thank you all for watching my review for The Sword in the Stone. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell button down below. Huh? Make sure you follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, go check out my Twitch channel, and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video, but until then, have a good day, and take care of yourselves.